Welcome to the Macy's Cooking Show. My name is Scott Isaacson, and I'm here with Nina Isaacson, the local acupuncturist in Spanish Fork, and we're here today to talk about some Chinese cooking. Nina, what are we doing? <laughs> well, I have a lot of people that come in to me complaining of menstrual pain, and that's something that girls suffer from from the time they're 12 or 13 all the way up until my age. So I have a really wonderful recipe that has two specific herbs in, in it that will help with easing the menstrual cramps. So we're going to start with a Cornish game hen, a small chicken I bought here in the Macy's freezer department. And Scott, would you open that up, sure. rinse it off for me and put it in the pot? Thank you. The herbs that are really critical for this recipe are astragalus, I'm sorry, angelica. This is angelica root. And um, if you open it up, it smells like cookies. It's really potent. And you can buy this over at Beehive Health Essentials. And the reason I goofed saying astragalus is because um, I also got astragalus root over at Beehive Health, Health Essentials. The other herb is goji berries, and everybody's heard of gojitsa or um, wolfberry. Everybody's heard of gojitsa? Okay, <laughs> I've heard of gojitsa. <laughs> somebody but like you English maybe, but somebody like me, no. Is goji berries or wolfberry. And um, I remember seeing these down Do they at, smell like cookies too? I don't know, eat one. Eat one? Yeah, they're delicious. It's kind of like a raisin, only with a fruity flavor. Oh, that is like a raisin. Yeah. I didn't know that. No fruity flavor? Um, like Go ahead and put the chicken in the pot. Chicken goes in the pot. Did you show everybody that cute little chicken? Little chicken. Now Is, the reason why... Do you have to make this with a small chicken or could you do a big chicken? You could do a big chicken if okay. you wanted to. Uh, the chicken part is important. And the reason why we're using the whole chicken and not sliced chicken or chicken breast or frozen chicken parts is because you remember hearing growing up about your grandma's chicken soup and the grandma's chicken soup she didn't buy it um, in slices and pieces she got it from her chicken yard and the important part of that is the whole chicken the dark the light and the bones and boiling the bones is really critical here. So when you put the chicken in you just put the whole thing in? The whole chicken. Okay. Yep. Don't need to cut and it so, up or skin um, it or debone it or anything. No. In okay. fact, if you did debone it, I would want you to save those bones and use them for an, another recipe. I want to stop before we move on to those herbs and tell you that one of the best things that you can do for yourself is bone marrow soup. It's really critical for building your blood and helping to improve blood circulation. It's great for arthritis and um, diabetes. And if you just, just go to your computer and Google bone marrow soup, and you'll find all of the things that it's very beneficial for. But how would you make that? You have to get bone marrow, or can you get bones? Where get you, the bones. How would you get that? And you can buy those um, probably over the counter. I didn't check with the Macy's. Um, beef meat department but what I've done is every time we eat something with a bone in it turkey chicken pork chops I throw it in a ziploc bag in the freezer and when I've got a little collection I put them in my crock pot and start it boiling for about 24 to 48 hours and the bones begin to disintegrate and release all kinds of minerals and um, good healthy stuff into the water and the broth is what's important so then you strain out the bones and drink the broth season it up so it tastes good putting all your favorite spices in it so that's why we've got the bones in the chicken okay. uh, Scott would you slice some carrots sure. those are not one of the in important ingredients but I think they're pretty and carrots make everything taste sweet so I want to talk about the um, angelica root really quick so angelica it's Donghuai in my language. Don't you think that smells like cookies? Not chocolate chip, but it does smell good. <laughs> I think they're wonderful. So this uh, is a blood tonic. It invigorates your blood and improves blood circulation. That is why it is really, really good for helping somebody with menstrual cramps. And um, because it's going to help with the blood flow. So we're going to measure nine grams of the angelica root into our pot. Let's see how much we've got here. Oop, that's 11. Doesn't take much. I want a smaller piece. Now, where would somebody get something Perfect. like this? Nine. Get it on the internet, or, or would you just? I would go over to Beehive Health Essentials, right okay. across the street by the Kmart in the movie theater, and she's got everything there. My friend Avon Richmond owns that store, and if she doesn't have it, she'll get it for you. 
So, so um, say that one more time because nobody knows the language like you know it. Say okay. It Angelica root. Angelica root. Angelica. Starts okay. with an A, first letter of the alphabet, first ingredient for blood tonics. Okay? Angelica root. Great. The other ingredient that's really important is the wolfberry. And these are wonderful. And you just want one heaping tablespoon of wolfberry. Now, the wolfberry is um, uh, also a tonic, and it has the action of contracting the uterus. So you don't want to do a lot of wolfberry if you're pregnant, because that's not an action that you want in your body when you're pregnant. But if not, and you're having menstrual cramps, this is fantastic. Is um, there any benefit to that for a man? Absolutely. Um, it's uh, good for coughing and wheezing, and is also a very good diabetes uh, tonic. The recommendation is to take about nine berries five or ten times a day, and it will help uh, people with diabetes have to urinate a lot, and this helps to slow that down so they can actually get a good night's sleep. So that's good for that. So I'll need that a couple of carrots. Does it matter how many we No, do? that's perfect. Okay. Throw those right in. All right. This is a ginger root. Got it right over here at our Macy's Produce Department. And ginger is good for everything. Specifically for this recipe, it's warming for your body. So it's a spicy, warm herb, and it's good for a host of things. And we're going to make a tea out of it in a few minutes. When you, when you say warming, do you literally mean makes your body warm temperature-wise? Or is right. that is it a different concept? Have you ever eaten something that, like a spicy food, say a jalapeno pepper? It's cold to touch, and you put it in your mouth, and <laughs> you're not cold anymore, right? So ginger is the same way. Wasabi is uh, cold to touch, but it's warming inside your body. So this will warm you inside. So it's very good in teas, as we'll make tea a little bit later, for um, chasing away colds and flus. So this recipe calls for two slices of ginger. So here are two good slices. And whenever I use ginger, I like to just take the knife and score it just to release some of those juices into the tea or the soup that I'm making. So you plop it in there, skin and all of the ginger? You yep, just put it all in there. there. Nope, it's okay. good just the way it is. Okay. So we've got the chicken, the angelica root, the carrots, and the uh, ginger. Chicken and the, the, uh, the wolf. Uh, okay, the recipe also calls, the last ingredient is a rice wine. And so uh, just a half a cup. You don't ever want to put too much in but this serves to help extract the nutrients out of the herbs and also enhance the flavor of the soup. So what so, about the local audience that says, hey, I'm not going to do wine. What, is that, what are they going to do? 75% um, of it cooks out uh, as the boiling, as if you boil it for an hour in a soup, 75% of the alcohol is gone and the other 25% is dispersed into the the meat and the vegetables and it helps enhance the flavor and I don't think it counts as alcohol. So just asking. <laughs> so what about didn't you say that the in in medicinal purposes, I mean we're making a soup here, but isn't this almost more like a medicine in some sense? And medicinally the alcohol is actually going to extract something from the, the herbs that you put in there yeah. to make it more effective? Soaking the, the goji berries and the angelica root in the water that has the wine in it is going to help pull the nutrients out of the herbs that will help be beneficial to your body. So you actually need that to help make this as effective as possible. That's right. So everything is in it that we need except the water. Except the water. So would you just cover the chicken with the water? All right. Just up to covering. We also have scallions just for um, flavor and color because they're pretty. So we have some of these we've cut up, and we will put those in the, the pot just to serve it up and make it pretty. And if you want to add a little salt, and I tasted it earlier, and it needs salt. So. And do we cover this? Yes, we didn't find a lid, so we're going to use a pie tin. You want to be creative when you're cooking. Now the instruction is to boil this for one hour. Boy, bring it to a boil and then lower it to a simmer for one hour. And just simmer it for an hour and in an hour it's all cooked. And the most important part is the broth. So let's actually we should trade these and let's look at the one that's finished. 
Why don't you slide that over? These cooking shows are amazing. All of a sudden, it's done. It hasn't even been an hour yet. <laughs> so let's scoop some of this out. So this is the exact same thing that you've just made it earlier, and it's all ready to go now. Right. It's got everything in it. So if you look, you can see the slice of ginger root, some of the carrots. See the goji berries are in there floating around. They're orange, just like the carrots. And you can't see the... Um, Angelica root, oh, there it is, right there. Can you see the angelica root? It's all soft, it's had all the goodness cooked right into the broth. And the chicken, because the water has gone into the cavity of the chicken and boiled all the way around it for an hour, it's everything that we want is in the broth. So I'm just going to scoop this out and you can go ahead and eat the carrots and the chicken and all the other things could you eat also, the, the goji berries and, and the, the goji jello. berries. You could eat all that, but the main benefit is going to be but in the, the broth. But the benefit is in the broth. So drinking the broth is the important part. So I'm just going to scoop some of that into this bowl. And you've, you've done no other spices or seasonings at this point? I have added no seasonings or spices. I'm going to put a little sprinkling of, of the scallions in to float in the front and make it look nice. And I really think it needs just a pinch of salt. So I'm going to do, whoa! That's more than a pinch. Maybe not that much. Just a pinch of salt, and I think that would be perfect. And somebody could put pepper or something in if they wanted to, to add it to taste. Yes. Or would that harm? I would, 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 it would anything? wouldn't change anything. I would add all of the things that you like to put in your chicken soup, if you like Italian seasoning or if you like garlic. Just add it all in. It's not going to change the benefits of, of the herbal soup. But um, that's so the important part. Without the salt or without any of that, what kind of flavor would this have? Is it a bitter taste because of the herbs you put in, or is it a mild taste? You know, taste? it tastes like this. So it tastes like this herb, and um, it's, this is sort of a sweet, deep flavor, and it tastes like chicken soup with... So it's not going to be like drinking Dunkoin. NyQuil or something like that. You're going to like, ah! It's, it's be, not nasty. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to make ginger tea. You don't have to buy the pre-packaged gingers that come in the box. You can go to your produce section and get a big hunk of ginger root. All you have to do is slice some off. You want it small enough to go into your teacup. So I'm going to cut this one in half. Does it matter whether it's thin or thick or just whatever you want? It doesn't make any difference. I do it thin. I want all the juice. So I'm going to score it with a knife, as I did before and take a couple of slices and put it in my mug. All you need to do is your lovely electronic teapot and pour boiling water over your ginger slices. I usually only fill it about half full so it can steep for a few minutes and cool off and then I'll add cold water to it so I can drink it. The other thing is it would be very spicy and not tasty if you didn't have some sweetener. So raw local honey that you can buy at your local farmer's market is the best thing to add. So I love sweet. So I like to take a great big spoonful and put that right in my ginger tea. Honey is very nourishing to the body. It's, it coats the throat and is, is helpful if you've got a cold. And I said raw local honey, if it's grown within a 50 mile radius of your home and hasn't been heated over 110 degrees, then it qualifies as raw local honey. And that is very good for allergies. If you were to take a spoonful of raw local honey every day throughout the winter, by the time spring blooming comes around, you'll notice a significant reduction in your allergies. And is that because the bees are collecting the local pollen, therefore you're ingesting that? That's exactly. Right. They go around with all their little fuzzy feet and collect pollens from everything that you're allergic to and put it right in their honey so you're getting a little homeopathic dose every day. 
If you have serious allergies, I recommend not doing it by yourself. You want somebody else to be with you the first time you do raw honey, just to make sure you don't go into anaphylactic shock or anything crazy like that. I don't know if it's ever happened in the history of the world, but we want to be careful. Just as a reminder though, you've said several times to me that these herbs are potent. These are, they have medicinal effect and you have to be pretty careful about how much you take of things and you can't just say, oh, well, a little bit of this is gonna be, a lot's gonna be better than a little. You have to kind of know what you're doing, right? The pharmaceuticals that we use today came originally from herbs. That's where we get our drugs is herbal remedies initially. So it's really dangerous to hear someone say, oh, this, um, for example, the wolfberry. This wolfberry is very good for um, menstrual cramps or for blood circulation or for whatever. It's good for your vision. And then somebody who's pregnant says, ooh, I need blood circulation. I need help with my vision. And she takes a whole bunch and her uterus starts cramping. So you, you have to really know what you're doing when you're taking any kind of herb, Chinese herbs or Western herbs, and uh, do your research and talk to somebody who knows how to administer them so you don't make a mistake. So, so far we only have just the hot water, the honey, and the ginger. And that's all that's you it? need, and it is so good. I must admit, I've had this before, it is really good. So now that it's been steeping for a while, I'm just gonna add a little cool water so it's cool enough to drink. And the longer you let it steep, the better, does it matter? Uh, I let it steep until it's cool enough to drink. Um, t 10 minutes is 10. fine, yeah. So, do you wanna taste? Sure. Ah, very good. It's good, right? I love it. It's yeah, tasty. Very good. When it's all done, I just love to take this ginger slice uh, and suck the ginger out of the <laughs> ginger slice because the, the, the spiciest part has already been uh, soaked out, so it's not as burny and spicy as it would have been raw, but it's very, very sweet. So anyway, there we are. There's my ginger. I love a good cup of ginger tea in the winter time, especially if I feel that scratchy throat or that body aches coming on. Ginger tea is really a nice warming way to chase away the colds and the flus. A fun way to add, make it even warmer is to add warm cinnamon to it. Cinnamon is a warm spice. You can add that to your ginger tea and your honey, and it helps to chase away the colds and the flus. It's also fantastic for nausea, pregnant morning sickness, motion sickness, any kind of nausea. Ginger soothes and calms the stomach and makes everything feel better. Everybody wants to know, does acupuncture hurt? How does acupuncture work? What does acupuncture treat? So I have the perfect little example I found. This is an electric ball. So Ellery is going to help us demonstrate how this works. And we're going to light the battery up inside this ball just with the electricity in our own bodies. So Ellery, would you touch this metal piece right here and hold hands with Scott. And Scott, you touch the other side. Oh my gosh, look at that. One finger, Scott. There you go. Cool, huh? Hey, you guys do the ET touch and just touch with one finger instead of holding hands. <gasps> wow. Isn't so that that's, cool? that electricity is going through our bodies? The electricity is going through our bodies and, and lighting up this ball. Wow. Isn't that cool? Thank you for your help. You can go sit down. So our bodies are electrically charged. We are made of atoms, and what is an atom? It's a positively charged proton, a negatively charged electron. And if you take a stainless steel needle and put it in, your, in a specific point in your body, it stirs up all those electrically charged atoms, and where's all the elect extra electricity going to go? So your body has 14 meridians that flow through it like a river. And um, if you get a blockage in a meridian, that causes ill health or pain or stagnation. Chinese medicine says anything that's still or static causes sickness. So you want everything to flow smoothly. So 
modern science has shown that acupuncture points are areas of lowered electrical resistance. And if I take a stainless steel needle and put it in an area of lowered electrical resistance, stir up all those electrically charged atoms, and increase the electrical resistance of that point, it goes right up the meridian and busts out the blockages, just as if there were a boulder in the river. Sometimes when there's a big boulder in the river, um, they, the big they, whoever that is, will flush the river with water and push the boulder and the debris out of the way to open up the river. And that's what acupuncture does. My favorite example is, say you come in and you've got a toothache and you've been to the dentist and there's not a, a abscess or um, an infection or a cracked tooth, but you've got a toothache. So I will put a needle between your second and third toe. And the reason for that is, that the, the tooth meridian starts here, comes down below your eyes, wraps around your teeth, goes down two inches each side of the midline, all the way down to between your second and third toe. And so if I put a needle there, it just go, uh, sends the electricity right up the meridian, takes the fire out of the mouth, and pulls it down right away. So you're saying that the pain would be some sort of blockage, and then the needle is going to go in clear that blockage, and then the electricity is going to flow along that meridian? Exactly. So putting a needle in your toe can actually help a toothache. Exactly. And That's it makes me look brilliant because I really <laughs> just come in with a toothache. I love that. The reason why that, uh, one thing that you didn't realize was that you got up in the middle of the night and whacked the side of your leg against an end table, and you have a great big whopping bruise on the side of your leg right on that meridian. And when I put the needle in, it just opened up that that blockage and made it flow again correctly. So that's how acupuncture works. Uh, everybody wants to know, do they hurt? And this is one of my favorite things. When my children were little, I used to do what we called the unicorn point right here in the middle of the forehead. And my kids would say, mom, put the unicorn point in so I can go freak out my friends. <laughs> so um, they would do that. What did I do with the? And when you're talking about needles here, you're not talking about the kind of needles you go to the doctor with, right? You I mean, can fit about 12 to 17 of mine inside a hypodermic. So these almost don't, aren't felt at all. Uh, we're going to do the unicorn point on I my mean? very cooperative sweet <laughs> husband because he's such a good guy. And so you can see what it, um, what it looks like. So these little needles are so tiny and thin. I don't even know if you, you can see, see that. Can you even see that? So... Is it in? <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even feel it. Some of the, all the points aren't that small. Uh, most, if they're any longer, the needle will not go into your skin unless it's got a tube around it. Because the needle is so thin that it would actually bend before it, it went into It would bend the before skin. it would go in. So, so they come in these little tubes, and I'll just do this on myself so you can see what this looks like. I put the tube on the skin, and that's what you feel. And you can see that the needle is sitting up just above the tube. I just tap that in, and the needle is in past the superficial layer of the skin. And that's the acupuncture needle. And if you take it out, no spurting of blood, and it didn't <laughs> hurt, and it's just very thin. All the needles are single use. They're used just the one time. Then I put them in a sharps container, never seen, be seen again by human eyes. How's that feel? Can you feel it? You can't feel it. This is the third eye point. And, um, and we used to call it the Percocet point in school because it just helps people really relax and chill and calm down. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from acupuncture school is by Thomas Edison. And he said, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. And if we all do that, we'll be much healthier. <laughs>